Located in the San Bernardino Mountains of Southern California, the small city of Big Bear Lake is a popular holiday destination. The region draws thousands of tourists and its picturesque surroundings have been used as locations for many Hollywood classics, including Daniel Boone, Gone with the Wind, and even Disney's Old Yeller. But Big Bear Lake is also known as the location of a much more shocking filming project. The tranquil mountains of Big Bear are a world away from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. They're also home to the well-known Hollywood animal trainer and stuntman, Randy Miller. Randy's company, Predators in Action, specializes in location and studio-trained exotic animals. Yeah, I mean, I definitely built Predators in Action with no fear. We still do push the envelope, but back in the day, we really pushed the envelope. And I mean in every way. It could be a stunt doing a staged attack, or even just a simple model shoot with a tiger crawling on a girl that the cat's never seen before. We did things back then we probably wouldn't do today. Drawn to animals from a young age, Randy's family was in the seltzer business, and during the 80s, he helped turn the family business into a $100 million a year company. He lived an extravagant lifestyle and used his successful business fortune to indulge his childhood dream of owning big cats, bears, and other exotic animals. Back in the day, I had great resources to, you know, accommodate these types of animals and to just, just to get the permits and, and permission to have them. Basically have them with me wherever I go. And that's really what I did. We built a house in the Hollywood Hills with a, a three-story glass cage. It was designed, you know, for big exotic animals. I didn't have any animals live there full time. I had a place out in the desert where I kept all my animals and I used to bring them in to visit while I was in Hollywood, just so I could always have my animals around. When the family business went bankrupt, Randy was forced to find another way to both earn a living and keep his dangerous pets. He turned his eccentric hobby into a career and began supplying big cats, grizzly bears, and wolves for big budget Hollywood movies and high rating TV shows. His signature stunt was a staged attack, where his animals staged realistic but harmless attacks. He created a unique and potentially life-threatening product. My staged attack was not taught. Nobody teaches you that. It was developed back in those days, like in that house with that glass cage. I used to wrestle my animals and play with them. I mean, the reason I used to wrestle and play with my animals was because of the joy I got out of it and the fun it was. But the animals bond so much stronger when you have that kind of interaction. They just do. I mean, the key to an animal's heart is to play and have fun. And those lions and tigers, bears, they love to wrestle and play. So I think most of us wrestle and play with younger animals. As they get older, it becomes much more dangerous. My whole stage attack developed out of playing with these animals as they matured and just learning how to control it. Years of high-risk training with ferocious carnivores yielded the ultimate Hollywood payoff. When Miller won a Stunt Academy Award for his role as Russell Crowe's stunt double during the tiger attack scenes in the blockbuster movie, Gladiator. Once I focused on doing film work with these animals and I really focused on training them to be in movies, that's what we were training for was that scene, not even knowing it. But I mean, I would say our whole career 
put us there. That tiger was raised its whole life to play out all that action you see in that scene. You know, the lunging, the jumping, the snarling, and that staged attack. I got bit on yeah, that show. The there were a lot of staged attack scenes, and they, it required a lot of takes over and over. Attacks from the back, attacks from the front. While filming one of those attack scenes, um, Tara the tiger I was using ended up grabbing the wardrobe, which was leather. So she grabbed it and, you know, she got possessive over it is what happened. And she ended up biting, she tried to take it from me and she bit through it and put a hole in my arm. So at that time they cut and said, hey, we got it, done. Went, undressed, got out of wardrobe. They, they you know, they bandaged up my arm. And then a PA comes in and says, hey, the main camera broke. We don't know when it, the film actually broke, so we gotta go out and refilm all that. Like the special effects camera. They got me back out there, they put a steel plate over the wound, and we started doing it again. And the only reason I was able to continue doing that attack after getting bit pretty bad was I understood why she bit me. You know, she wasn't really biting me. She didn't go after me out of anger. She went after the wardrobe and got possessive over it. Between 1990 and 2011, there were over 300 incidents involving captive big cats in the U.S. 20 people were killed. Over the same time, captive bears killed six and injured 61. Working alongside predators is never 100% safe for the humans involved. American Humane is responsible for making sure that the work is safe for the animals. Our job is really just to make sure it's done well. We, we're, our primary mission is to oversee, basically police, the care, the safety, the humane treatment of the animals while they're on set. The others want to debate whether it's philosophically okay to use these animals. So when I'm asked, you know, should these animals be used, Look, we could sit here for three hours, four hours, and, and probably not arrive to a, a decent answer. But when I tell you, look, my job is to make sure that the animals that are participating, are being used in these environments, are cared for properly, that is really our job and our mission. Big cats, grizzly bears, and wolves are popular movie stars, and they're all capable of removing human limbs in seconds. Even a monkey can cause serious lacerations and injury. Strict safety protocols are always in place, but when dealing with unpredictable natural predators, safety measures aren't always 100% effective. You know, on the good sets, in my experience, on the controlled film sets that hire the right people who care for their animals, who've had the time, put in the time to train them properly and and go through all the preventative measures. In instances like that, I think it's very safe. I think it's very controlled and safe. Now, as it often is, it comes down to hiring the right people, right? Getting the right team around you. Because if you get someone who doesn't have the experience, you're gonna be in trouble. One thing with my line of work, we have developed one of the best safety protocols there is. I mean, you need a fast plan if something goes wrong. And, and we all learned even with that, the ultimate price can get paid, you know? These animals are capable of taking somebody's life in a matter of seconds. So my position, knowing that, anybody handling these animals, not just owning these animals, but working around these animals, should have the education and experience to participate in stopping or helping save somebody's life if there's an accident or an attack taking place. Many exotic pet owners raise their animals from babies, building a strong bond and creating a sense of trust. It can be easy to forget that such majestic and affectionate creatures can also be ruthless killers. There could be a false sense of security there where you feel, where you, you believe it's safer than it really is. 
Fire Department emergency. How can I? Hi, Fire Department with the transfer. She's at Onyx Summit. Off of Rainbow Lane. Calm down. Off Rainbow Lane. He's bleeding from his neck heavily. Hold on, ma'am. She's at Onyx Summit. Off of Rainbow Lane. There's a bear. We think it's an animal attack. Okay. Yes, a bear attack. A bear attack. Until you've experienced, you know, what can happen, how fast things can change, you don't really have a clue. You know, and unfortunately, it takes a tragic, you know, accident to, to really experience what I'm talking about. A bear attack. Okay. He's bleeding heavily from his neck. Okay. We're trying to get him into the car. We need someone here immediately. And, you know, you do this long enough. You know, I, I, I know people that have been doing this for generations. And you talk to guys that have been doing this for a long time. You know, we've all experienced something. In 2008, Randy's cousin, Stefan Miller, was fatally wounded while shooting a promotional video at Randy's Big Bear property. Stevie's co-star and killer was a 700-pound, 7.5-foot grizzly bear named Rocky. The attack was swift and completely unexpected. We weren't ready for what happened. That's how fast it is. That's how fast it can, it can happen. I mean, if you actually time it, once it started, it was like three and a half seconds. It all happened really fast. So we stopped it, and actually Stevie appeared to be okay. We later learned it was a fatal bite, one single bite. Five-year-old Rocky had been trained to wrestle humans and was best known for his appearance as Dewey the Killer Bear in the 2008 film Semi-Pro. Stevie wanted to wrestle Rocky. You know, he had experience in the past. Rocky was a great candidate for wrestling somebody that, you know, wasn't doing it all the time. The authorities deemed it an accident based on the injuries. They could tell by the injuries what type of attack or bite took place. They ruled it a single bite in, in Rocky's case. Although that single bite left a profound scar on Randy, incredibly, he still lives with and cares for Rocky the bear. A lot of people love animals and say they love animals, but some people, like myself, love them so much they have to be with them. And I think that's the difference, you know? It's easy for somebody to criticize what we do, but they may not have that same desire. I know from experience, I have that desire that's more important to me than anything else, having, keeping my animals, caring for my animals, my animals' welfare. I mean, that's what got me into what I do. You know, it really is. It started out as a hobby, and it turned into a profession. You hear about an animal that attacks somebody that had never, you know, had an incident in the past until that moment, and that was the moment with, with Rocky. Working so closely with these types of animals, owners develop a close relationship with an animal that, in the wild, would see them as prey. Perhaps surprisingly, American Humane's Quan Stewart sees that bond as beneficial for the animals too. This gets into a very big ethical debate. You know, should these exotics be in film? And, you know, if, if you have the right people with the right expertise, it can provide the right long-term care for these animals. Yes, I think it's okay. Uh, a lot of these animals are domesticated at a very young age. They're used to human contact. They enjoy human contact. I mean, there's a reward there, you know, especially with a, a creature that could take your life in a matter of seconds, you know? Maybe part of that starts, you know, from the adrenaline rush you, you get with, with it, but there's a lot more to it than that. There really is. You know, these animals do show affection and exotic cats, I've always said, are the most affectionate creatures on Earth. And they are. They will sit with you for hours showing affection. I mean, they're moody, and that's what makes them dangerous. It's kind of like a dog, you know, where they're very friendly and fun. And it usually takes a while before you see their instincts come out, but eventually they will. And all these animals get possessive and it might be something you didn't see until that moment. And when they get like that, 
It doesn't matter how much they love you, they'll kill you over, over anything. That's how, that's the, it's just in their instincts. It's, it's just in their DNA. Today, Randy remains close to his collection of unusual and dangerous pets. Seven big cats and several bears, including Rocky. I can tell you this, if you put somebody near one of these animals, there is a chance something could go wrong. There is. 